Hey, everyone. Welcome to the That's Allowed podcast. I'm your hostess, Adrienne McKeon, and today we have Dawn. Please introduce yourself, Dawn. Hi. I'm super comma Dawn. (laughs) Dawn super. (laughs) That's really my name. I married it, but it's mine. Absolutely. (laughs) So Dawn, what is the story that the world is not getting? Well, I'm putting my story out there and the biggest reason the world isn't getting it is because it hasn't gotten enough traction. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, How to say all this in a a short period of time. I have a lifelong chronic illness since I was 11 and um, I never knew what it meant to be happy until my 41st birthday. (laughs) I mean, I had been happy in spurts, but um, certain key things that I did led to happy just falling out of the sky and bonking me on the head. And I had that realization that um, it was mine and it was mine for the choosing. People here choose happiness and you really, you don't believe that you can do that until the day you do. (laughs) And you just decide, wow, this feels really good. I want to hold on to this. So um, I was in the support groups on Facebook for uh, narcolepsy and fibromyalgia and a couple other things. And um, narcolepsy is a disorder that's fueled by emotion. So um, being an empath and being narcoleptic, I was just a barrage of other people's emotions. My whole life that had a lot to do with me finally finding happiness was learning how to turn that off. (laughs) And... um, I decided to start a support group that was only positive. (laughs) You couldn't be negative. There's no whining, no griping, no hopelessness, no unsupportive comments. And um, I called it the Positively Narcolepsy Group. And uh, it's three years old now, and there are over 2,400 people in there. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. There are between 20 and 30,000 in the bigger narcolepsy groups. So for me to get 10% of those people who, you know, really wanted a space where they could talk, they could come with their narcolepsy and talk about life rather than having narcolepsy be the focus of everything. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So while that was going on, I started a blog called uh, Going Beyond Coping because um, this is a great story. A friend of mine, uh, I was listening to this song and I really loved it. It was um, about being okay. And she asked me, um, why just be okay? And I thought, well, heck, right now, okay is like the penthouse compared to where I am, where I'm struggling to get. I was I was under rock bottom at that point physically and really struggling with my health. And so I thought about it and I'm like, well, why can't I be more than okay? Why can't I be great? Why can't I be awesome? Why can't I be those things? And it started me on this journey to eliminate the not okay in my life. (laughs) And I did. And, um, I mean, I still experience the full range of emotions like everybody else does, but my default is happy and I choose not to be upset about things anymore. I just, I'm not giving any more of the little time that I have away to misery. I I just refuse. (laughs) I like to tell people in my group, you're never going to go on your deathbed wishing you'd been harder on yourself. (laughs) So true. So, so yeah, so I'm growing the blog and um, I started another page to go with that blog. And um, I've told people that once I get that um, big enough, I'm going to start a, a, a coping group from that page, which is um, the Going Beyond Coping. Um, and then we'll bring in all the chronic illness and chronic pain sufferers because in the positively narcolepsy group, there are a lot of people who have fibromyalgia and Sjogren's and those other disorders, but the focus is really narcolepsy. Um, I have over 82% participation in that Facebook group. 
And every time I do the math, it blows my mind that, you know, yeah. people want this. They want some place to go where they can ask about a medicine where people aren't going to be jumping on them about it or um, sharing their crappy experience and, and ruining any kind of thought process that they might want to have about whether or not to try because the meds for narcolepsy are, are serious side effects. It's a band-aid. It's not a cure. And um, there's a lot of struggle that goes on. And um, I call it narcolepsy strong. <laughs> um, Navy SEALs train for uh, Hell Week. It's five days of sleep deprivation. And um, the typical person with narcolepsy is classified as three days sleep deprived. 24 seven, every day that they're alive. Even with meds, because the deal with narcolepsy is that um, the sleep wake cycle produces hypocretin and the receptors are what control that. They catch the wake, they catch the sleep, you know, whatever the science of it is. I don't really care to understand that deeply about it. But um, they're broken and we don't, we don't have them. So that's why they call it a segmented sleep disorder. I can sleep for six hours at night and then I have to take a nap at one and then I have to take another nap around six. And that's just the way that my life works best. So um, nothing restores that sleep deprivation for us. There's no insulin for narcolepsy yet that um, will shore up that deficit. So we're constantly three days sleep deprived. So I just tell them, you know, you're, you're stronger than a Navy SEAL. And they only have to sleep for five days. And then as long as they're enlisted and once they retire, they can sleep all day if they want to. But, you know, we have to keep being uh, tough. We have that endurance. And, and that's why I call it narcolepsy strong because there's no other strong like it. Absolutely. So tell, tell us a little bit about what that's like. What is it like to be three days sleep deprived every day of your life? Um, what's really interesting about it is that so many of us who have the narcolepsy forget. <laughs> Memory is part of, you know, sleep. When you sleep at night, um, I, I like to say naps are the brain's administrative assistant because when you're sleeping, it's filing all your memories for you. So if you never get that sleep, your desk is just a mess all the time. <laughs> and so people with narcolepsy appear as though they have ADHD, they appear lazy, they appear um, disinterested, distracted, um, like they don't care enough about stuff. Um, a lot of the things physiologically that happen with us, like I get really hot when I'm tired. Um, I used to be really, really cold, like all the time. Like I called myself a Sherpa without a mountain. <laughs> so I was always in jackets and blankets and hats and everything. And in January of 2019, I got bit by some flies in my yard and my body went nuts. And I looked like I was chemically burned on 70% of my body. Wow. It lasted for five months and it took five specialists to get it under control. And um, I totally forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> I think it happens. I call it train brain. <laughs> you're, you get on one train and then before you know it, your tracks are off. Um, what was the point of telling you this? So I was just asking, you know, what, what is, what is it like? So this is just oh, yeah, to be three days sleep deprived. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you just, you have a lot of things that happen because of the sleep deprivation that aren't specifically from narcolepsy. So problems with your thyroid, you can have problems with your other glands. Um, I have nine disorders. <laughs> Uh, narcolepsy and I have cataplexy, which is um, under certain emotional conditions, I lose muscle control. And the best way to explain it is when you go to sleep at night, your brain puts your body into sleep paralysis so that your 
punch people while you're sleeping. Cataplexy is sleep paralysis while you're awake. So if I'm sitting like this and, and I have my trigger, my elbow will give out and um, sometimes my jaw goes slack. And I, it's just like, like I'm gonna drool or whatever. Um, rolling my ankle, trick knee, those are all part of that. Um, and then I have two movement disorders that go with the sleep disorders. I have a restless leg syndrome where you feel like you have spidery things in your leg. A lot of people have that where they feel a need to kick. And then I have a periodic limb movement disorder, which is a restless leg is while you're awake, periodic limb is while you're asleep. So if your partner tells you that you continue to twitch while you're asleep, that's a separate sleep disorder and it should be treated. It sh you should see a physician, you should ask for a sleep study. Um, when I went in for my sleep study, I discovered that the movements were happening 56 times a minute. <laughs> wow. Which is why even though I was sleeping 12 hours, I was constantly in and out of REM and I was not getting any restorative sleep at all. And then um, I think connected to the sleep is the fibromyalgia and I also have myofascial pain syndrome. Um, I got clipped in the back of the neck with a serving tray loaded with dishes. And after that, and I had a fall in the shower. I was cleaning houses for a living. And um, I just started having, you know, the trigger point pain. And the myofascial pain syndrome is interesting. Uh, for me, like, you know, you have a raw chicken and you cut the skin and there's that white that's over the breast. And if you cut the breast, it pops all out and inside. Yeah. So the white part is the fascia. So inside my body, my fascia shrinks. Mm. So it, if I stretch like this and it's bothering me, it feels like I'm ripping myself in half. <laughs> and <clears throat> the interesting thing about that is that um, I have to stretch anyway. Because if I don't, it's worse. Right. Is that fan okay? So, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then what else? I have TMJ really bad in my jaw. Um, in my S bone, there's an extra piece of bone. So, good lock. <laughs> and I have to touch my chin to release it. And that's manifested in like where I can't open my mouth all the way or I can't close my mouth all the way for months at a time where I'm like cutting my food really small and shoving it in through my teeth. <laughs> and it's like a little chip on the bowl. Right. Yeah. Um, so YouTube, I found this great uh, chiropractor. His YouTube handle, whatever you call it, is uh, motivational doc, all one word. And if anyone has chronic illness or pain, he's definitely a great one to just watch some of his videos. Um, I have tinnitus and uh, he's got great massages to help ease quiet mm -hmm. a little bit. Can't fix it. It's, you know, once you're physiologically having tinnitus, that's either done. Yeah. Um, tinnitus, tinnitus, I never know how to say that. Um, <laughs> and then uh, the TMJ, he also has great ways for you to tell which side is out and what massage to do to get it back in yourself really saved me a lot. Um, a lot of natural stuff. I do uh, autoimmune paleo diet. I dropped 15 symptoms going on autoimmune paleo. Yeah, huge. It's, um, I, I like to say uh, self-care is my side hustle <laughs> because I have to do meal prep and I take a lot of supplements that help me cope. Um, and, uh, yeah, I really believe that when you have a chronic illness, you have to treat yourself as a part-time job. You just have to. Otherwise, you're going to suffer, like, all the time. And when I say the self, I don't mean just the body. It's, it's outside of diet, exercise, and meditation. you got to think outside the bottle into, how's my self-esteem? 
how do I feel about myself and my contribution to the world? Because even if you're a happy person, if you feel like you're less than because you can't go to work full time, that's affecting your symptoms. If you're blaming people for the state of your life, if you're um, in victim mode, if you are um, judging yourself harshly, all those little things add up to extra naps and neck aches and back aches and stomach aches and and that's how they manifest and I never heard from my doctor hey did you know <clears throat> having low self-esteem will make you more sleepy <laughs> did you know that no never heard anything like that from a physician at all exercise eat better take this medicine that's all I've ever heard and once I got um I, I, I was married for 15 years and um, was miserable for most of them. And I blew up my life and decided that I would rather be alone and lonely than lonely with someone 10 feet away from me. And so um, I tried to go back on medication for the narcolepsy and the drug they give you is uh, sodium oxybate. It's a GHB essentially is what it is. So it's supposed to knock you flat out so that you get some of that restorative sleep. And then you set an alarm to wake you up at like three o'clock in the morning and you take your second dose and then you get a couple more hours of sleep if you're lucky. So um, I was excited to try it. I was a little nervous about how unconscious would I be. Um, I was renting a room in someone else's house and that safety wasn't there for me, you know? But uh, it didn't matter because 42 days later, I was like deathly ill. Um, I only took it for 42 days. It turned my saliva to salt. And uh, I ended up with a pseudomonas infection, which is typically only seen in people dying in hospice. <laughs> and I was going to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm not strong. I, Seriously, my 21st birthday, I collapsed from pneumonia at work. Didn't know I had pneumonia because when you're tired all the time, you just, you push through, you know, and teaching myself how to stop pushing through changed my life. To stop, it's another big part of the reason why I want to do the um, YouTube channel and the blog is um, I like to a joke. I want to be the Tony Rob, female Tony Robbins of chronic illness. I'm not going to tell you, uh, just do it. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you push until you die. It's just, it's not going to happen. I'm going to tell you to be nice to yourself and be kind to yourself and, and listen to what your body wants. Because if you can give it a little bit of what it wants, it might give you back some more life. Absolutely. My lips hurt. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So do you want to tell, tell everybody what's going on with your lips? Cause this is just a, a great example of like how it never ends new symptoms all the time. I, I really don't know what's going on. Um, like four days ago, I woke up from my nap and, um, it felt like I had drank something really hot and burned the inside of my lips. And that's happened to me before. I, I suck my tongue in my sleep, apparently. <laughs> so I often see like geometric patterns on the side of my tongue from pulling it through my teeth. Mm -hmm. But it usually goes away like in an hour or so. And uh, by the end of that night, I knew it wasn't going anywhere. And it, it feels like my lips are chapped, um, but they're also peeling and they feel burned. And um, inside my mouth feels like a little burny in the back. And um, the Santa Ana winds are coming through. I live in the San Fernando Valley outside Los yeah. Angeles. And anytime the winds come, they bring with it whatever it is they're carrying. And we've had a lot of fires in California and a lot of ash falling. And um, my skin thing started about the same time of year as is now. So that's another thing that's really important in chronic illness is 
paying attention to that kind of stuff. You know, my thyroid went crazy. I was having lady hormone issues and I got the fly bites and that was enough. Um, I like to say that autoimmune disease is like a Ouija board to other autoimmune diseases. <laughs> you know, once you open the portal, forget it. So try to stay as healthy as you can because um, even a cold can bring something else on. Um, when the dust settled from the salty mouth, I had uh, I was diagnosed with Sjogren's syndrome, which I always, um, after I learned about it, because Sjogren's is also rare like narcolepsy, um, it's an autoimmune disease that attacks your moisture producing glands. Mm. So the eyeballs, the mouth, the lady business, your organs, I mean, your body's 96% water. So that's all moisture. And um, I think this could be Sjogren's because the, there's a gland in the lip that um, does flare. I did it, I asked in the group if anyone had similar symptoms. Um, I also have blister eczema on my hands right now because that comes with change of season. And a friend of mine told me she had an eczema flare that was similar to this. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know what it is, but, um, I had recently added, um, two weeks ago, I stopped yogurt because um, I was having hiving on my arms and, um, yogurt is histamines. And, you know, when you're hiving, you want to try and keep your bucket of histamine as low as possible. Um, my friend says it that way, when you have too much histamine, your bucket just overflows and that's when you get hives and other kinds of skin issues like that. So. I cut the yogurt and um, started having stomach problems because I was no longer getting my fermented. I don't like fermented food at all. So um, I got the kombucha and I think I had a little bit too much of it and it made me really gassy. <laughs> so I was taking gas pills or like kombucha for the ferment. Eh. And then another thing I had um, added recently was uh, CBN. It's cannabinol. It's different from cannabidiol, which is CBD. Mm -hmm. um, is, uh, from, it comes from the aged plant, and it deepens sleep and increases pain relief. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, it's expensive. Um, they sell it here in the dispensary in California, and it's like $5 a capsule. Wow. I typically only do the CBN when I'm having extra physical pain because um, it's worth the extra money to not be in pain, right? Yeah. <laughs> Access to that. So um, I found a new one while I was there that I could split in half and it was a lot cheaper. So I decided to do a half and just add it to my THC at night. And um, so that was new. So those two things I stopped doing when this continued. Um, to see, and it's only been a day, so, um, and I didn't take any of my supplements today, so the, the best thing for me to do is strip back, let's strip back everything that we're doing that might be aggravating it, and see if we can get it to stop on its own, um, you know, Absolutely. Um, increase my nutrients and my veggies and fruits and um, that kind of stuff, and avoid, like, um, we had Chinese uh, over the weekend. And um, even though I just asked for shrimp and, and broccoli stir fried with no sauce, they are still cooking it in the pan that had soy in it and yeah. their ingredients that they use in restaurants. So that it could be something as simple as that. And yeah. time, you have to notice and then you have to try and do something about it. And then you just have to give it time to yeah. get it to work. So how do you stay? Um, sure. Yeah. So you said, you know, you had this kind of epiphany where you decided that you could just choose joy, like exactly where you're at. Right. So how do you choose joy when you're in pain? How do you choose joy when you're constantly in discomfort? It's, it's not easy. That's for sure. And, um, I'm not always able to choose it. I, you know, uh, after I took that drug that did the salty thing to my mouth, I started having these periodic episodes of uh, what I call despondency. Mm -hmm. And to me, despondency, um, it's not I want to die or I want to kill myself. It's more like, God, can this be over? 
Like seriously, I am so tired of having to do self-care as a part-time job, of having to feel so worn out and deal with these things that come and last for weeks and months. And gosh, how can you not feel that way? At least sometimes. So for me, it's cyclical and I like to uh, notice that's the key for me. Oh, darn. You know, maybe my brain chemicals are off. Maybe I'm out of serotonin and endorphins and the feel good stuff. And I just need to be quiet for a while and um, take some extra naps and uh, be nice to myself. Um, I tell the people in my group, when you can't handle it anymore, you need to become your own mom. And you're like, there, there, dear. You're going to be okay. You can do this. And, and give it to yourself, you know? Um, a lot of us don't have anyone giving us anything like that, even close. My husband worships the ground I walk on. Literally, he's um, demonstratively verbally in every way madly in love with me. Um, but he forgets, you know? He's human. He forgets that I have things wrong with me. And he may get upset because I didn't do something. And I'm like, look, my name is super. I'm not really super. <laughs> I know I seem it, but no, I have these physical limitations. Um, and I just won't, I won't let the physical limitations take my mental limitations. I won't. Um, Narcolepsy is a hobbling disease for beautiful geniuses who, without it, would take over the known universe. <laughs> <laughs> because if I could tell you all the things that I've accomplished, only being awake sometimes eight hours in a 24 hour period, um, it, it's impressive. Um, ego out of it, put it on paper, it's impressive. And a lot of us are like that. We get this crazy overachiever gene that comes with proving that we are not less than because we have things wrong with us. And that's great as long as you're not running yourself into the ground to do it. <laughs> you know, uh, I had a, a friend, I do uh, startup consulting for businesses. And um, I always try to explain that they need to run their business with empathy for themselves, for empathy for not only the mistakes that you make, but the choices that you make and um, any, any kind of uh, feelings that you experience. Um, there's a lot of fear in running a business. Um, the days the risk, the cash register is ringing, you're like, yes, we got this. And then the days that it's not, you're like, oh, is everybody going to forget about me? And I'm going to become irrelevant and my business is going to be done. And, and that's the same with anything, you know, come mm -hmm. working a job. It, you want to be relevant to um, whoever it is that's paying your salary, you know? So when you work for yourself, it's your customers. And when you work for someone else, it's your boss. But uh, having that perspective of uh, what I do is enough. That's critical. If I didn't get to the dishes, that's not a problem unless I let it be a problem. Even if it's a problem for someone else, it doesn't have to be your problem. And learning to reject that teaching yourself, practicing that uh, rejection, rejection of the thing. Um, it gives you confidence. Oh, here's a fun story. So uh, I was, I took a job, a consultant thing with a startup and uh, it was LED light bulbs and he was importing private labeling and importing them. So um, I had already, you know, had the experience with the importing and then I understood that and it was a really fresh startup. So I got to create all the collateral for us to start. And um, it was a lot of fun. And about three months in, 
I had given, um, I don't, I don't know how he found out, but the guy says to me, wait a minute, you're engaged to a guy named Steve Super. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, is that why your email is Don Super at your email address? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, and I'm like, wait a minute, you didn't know that? And he's like, no. And I'm like, you thought I was just calling myself super? And he's like, yeah, I thought you were that confident. And I'm like, ah, I inherited confidence without even intending to. And it was really fun because in the beginning, I remember saying to myself, he doesn't know what I know. He doesn't know what I know. And, and I used that as uh, my confidence booster. And um, that's, that's how I learned it, you know. I was isolated a lot as a kid. Um, I was a latchkey kid. I had a five years older sister who really didn't want much to do with us and an 18 month younger sister who we were, we were pretty close most of the time growing up. And, but um, I went to a private school and there were like 14 kids in my class and they all hated me. <laughs> I can laugh about it now. Yeah. Uh, that 41st birthday, things got a lot easier. Um, but yeah, there were, um, I can see now as a grown up why they didn't like me. And the, the reasons carried with me through adulthood. And nobody, like the doctor never told me that self esteem would make me not sleepy. Nobody ever said, hey, being a blabber mouth is not a good thing to do. <laughs> You know, I had read how to win friends and influence people, but it didn't go through. And so, yeah, I had a lot of growth. Um, that was how I did it, actually. I, I, have you ever heard of the Ben Franklin clothes? Mm -mm. So the Ben Franklin clothes, whenever you have to decide on something, you list all the reasons why it's a good idea and all the reasons why it's a bad idea. And whichever column is longer is the one you support. <laughs> So I did Franklin clothes on myself. <laughs> this is what I like about myself. This is what I don't like about myself. And uh, became sold on the idea that I didn't like more about myself than I should, yeah, that I should, you know. And I got to working on it. And um, while I was going through my separation, my ex was at the place we used to share and he got a hold of my journal and not only did he read it, but he wrote in it. And he wrote, only when you see your part in all of this will things change. And he meant it like a, like a jab. But after I got done being thoroughly mad that he had done it, it dawned on me, pun intended, that he was absolutely right. And I went to him and I said, you know what? You are 100% right. Our entire marriage is completely my fault. He's like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? And I said, I never should have stayed with you. I, I, ne I never should have stayed. After the first year, I should have got out. And I had so many opportunities because we had this cyclical relationship where mm -hmm everything would start falling to pieces and there would be a confrontation and there would be a mea culpa and there would be a return to normalcy and then shit start sorry things Bye. started repeating yeah and it was cyclical and it was constant and i i let myself be snowed every single time into believing this was the time that he's finally gonna get his stuff together and nope that was <laughs> Either. And 11 years later, it's still not the time, apparently. <laughs> so, um, yeah, really glad that I, I just, I get that if something's going wrong, I'm part of it. Whatever it is, it's either because I'm participating in the game playing, that the game is continuing, or because I'm, I'm allowing someone to my boundaries or um, try to pull one over on me or make me a doormat or whatever those things are. 
those all come from a need to fit in and a need to belong and a need to have people like you. Um, that's one of my YouTube videos. Uh, what happens if I don't need people to like me? And I had to do that when I started the group um, because there was a lot of pushback from people because someone would barf their drama into a post and um, I would delete it. That's in the rules. If something's there that shouldn't be there, it gets deleted without comment for everyone's benefit. And um, someone posted like, oh, they deleted my comment. And then all these other people were jumping on the, the bandwagon about that. And I just had to nip it in the bud. Like, here are the rules, <laughs> you know? There are boundaries, baby. They're there for a reason. And I think a lot of people discount other people's drama in their emotional distress. So it's talked about, but I don't think the connection is quite made all the time. Like people complain about Facebook being empty and vapid. I never see anything empty or vapid on my Facebook. You know, complaining about Facebook is like complaining about your bookcase when you let your neighbor choose your books. <laughs> you pick all that stuff, you know, and you decide who to follow, who to be friends with, who to talk to, who to like. It's all controlled by you. So if you're unhappy with it, the mirror is really the only place to be looking. And life is like that. Coworkers, the stuff you choose to watch on television, the way you consume your news, the friends in your circle, your own family members, all of it is just one big soup that you sip on all day long. And if it's crap soup, you're going to have a crap time. <laughs> yeah, I always, I always say that the world is a mirror. And so you can't actually fix it. You can fix you. And then that will be reflected in it. Yes. <laughs> yes. That was my experience, too. It's so good to be on this side of it. And I just, I want to help as many people get here as I can. Um, I have a little uh, text group of friends. And we're all at that level. We're all big time chronically ill. Um, three of us are on disability and the other two work part-time. And so we get it, you know, we just support each other and um, help each other cut through the, the stuff that sleepiness keeps you from seeing sometimes, you know, yeah. being able to see it. Um, I actually just had a great realization that I could share that was um, Brene Brown Mm. And the other, like Brene Brown, and I owe so much to that woman. So much of my coping belongs to Brene Brown. And I read a page, someone shared on Facebook, a page from her book, Dare to Lead. And I can't read anymore. I, I call it uh, study-itis, because as soon as I crack the book, I start falling asleep. But I can do audio books. And even just half listening to this audiobook while I'm doing meal prep or driving to work, just crack my brain right open and open my eyes to a lot of things that I had been doing and didn't realize I had been doing. So um, to back up one thing, there's a, your autonomic nervous system is what you have experienced with the whole shaking thing, you know, during your confrontation, something that happens. Um, another one of the illnesses that I have is called POTS. It's um, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And what happens is when you change your posture, your um, blood doesn't flow properly. And so you get blood pooling, you can faint, you see stars, um, that kind of stuff. And the heart rate jacks, like you stand up and your heart rate's 110. You're like, ooh, I'm jogging, look at me, getting fit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that, that happens and you have that response. And so 
once it was identified to me that that was a, a, a response that I was having automatically, I kind of gave myself like this sort of forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. Up to that point, I felt like the shaking was because I let myself get so out of control. But really, I just was having the same response as any normal person would. But because of the pots, it made me like, you know, heart slamming or shaking and pits are sweating, just hugely autonomic response to that. So once I had that, just, just a little bit of awareness, it diminished the response to the point now where I can sense my hands starting to shake as I'm about to tell someone something in a comment. And I'll literally put my phone down. And I'll be like, you know what? You're too emotional right now to say this. Until your thumbs don't shake, you need to protect yourself from this first. Yeah. You know, get emotionally aligned. Like the comment needs to happen. You need to say the thing, but you need to not be emotionally charged up while you do it. And making those small adjustments, um, I call it getting right in your head, really, because um, a lot of people don't realize how much control they can have over their brain because they're so out of control with their illness. Yeah. You know, I can't control my sleep-wake cycle. I can't control my saliva flow. Um, but a lot of people say things like, um, oh, I can't turn my brain off. That's just who I am. Or I always have 50 tabs open at once. That's just who I am. And I used to be that person. <laughs> I totally did. And I do still have 50 tabs open, but they're all good. Right. In the past, I had five good ones and 20 that were like, why did you say that? Why did you do that? What does she think? What is she going to say? And when you kill those other 20 tabs and you have 50 tabs open and they're all like, oh, I should tell so-and-so happy birthday or, you know, I just the things that, that make you feel good. Um, yeah. It's a difference. And the whole train brain thing at night, um, quieting your mind. Um, that's actually a video that I'm shooting for my channel uh, next week. Um, I'll give you a teaser. So uh, when my son was in elementary school, I would stop and chat with the crossing guard, Carol. She was a lovely Jamaican woman and I just adored her. And we got to this place where, you know, as an empath, people tell you things, you know, that you wouldn't oh, yeah. get them to tell you. And her stories were sad. And um, I told her, Carol, you need boundaries. You need better boundaries. And she didn't understand that, as a lot of people don't. Um, even if you know what boundaries are, unless you're enforcing them, they're useless. So I told her, you need to um, bring your stop sign home. And when he starts doing it, you go, hold it up. And stop, stop. And I, I so comical, the thought of someone actually doing it, that uh, Carol moved into my brain and when I'm laying in bed at night and I'm thinking like the, not the, you know, typical sleepy meditation type thoughts or, um, oh, geez, I got to remember to call the plumber tomorrow. Not those kind of thoughts, but the whole, maybe they were right or yeah. I'm so useless or the, just those thoughts that are really crap. Like a lot of people think just because they have a thought that it's a legitimate thought that deserves a place in their head. But hey, your brain is not your friend, <laughs> not even close. And it just will spit some crazy stuff at you. And that's where Carol comes in and stop. You can think about anything but that. Um, another thing I do is, uh, this one's really silly, but I think that's why it works. My kids used to watch this, um, uh, anime type show where the guy would say something like honey honey ho and you like beam this beam and then I do that at my thoughts and I beam the beam of silence out into my empty warehouse I imagine the brain is the empty warehouse 
and there's nothing in there, nothing at all. And I kick everything out, nothing, nothing is allowed in the empty warehouse. <laughs> and it works, you know? I mean, things start to sneak back in after a fashion, but it gives you, even if you only have 30 to 60 seconds where you're thinking absolutely nothing, it's actually very nourishing for your brain. And so if you can, um, another one I like is OM. Like I listen to OM chanting because uh, here's a great tip. Uh, 432 hertz is the exact frequency of the ringing in my ear. So when I put my headphones in and I listen to the own chanting at 432 hertz, I don't hear the ringing in my ear. <laughs> and whether you know this or not, the ringing in your ear releases cortisol into your body. It's a chemical response that you have no control over one way or the other, but if you don't hear it, it's not stressing you out. So when I had that seven months where I couldn't open my mouth, I just listened to all chanting like 24 seven, just trying to relieve my stress level. And I listened to that at night. So when I can't stop thinking, I do the own and I just imagine the word own traveling through forward. And I just watch the letters and focus really super hard on just own. And so can I take you through a, a quick little exercise here? Yeah. So I love to end on this exercise and this is actually a perfect segue because it's very hard as you've discovered to stop thinking about something without thinking about something else, right? Yes. Having no thoughts is actually very difficult for your brain to do. So what I like to do is give people a go-to image or thought that they can just, whenever something's bugging them or they're, you know, giving themselves the, the guff, they can go to this and it will kind of recenter them into a happy place. So here's how it works. I want you to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. Okay. I have just waved my magic wand and all your dreams have now come true. Everything that you deeply desire, and I mean desire like as in desidere, like in the stars, right? This is like your purpose, your gift, everything that you want has now come to pass. So I want you to just look around your life You've just woken up. Where are you? What's going on? <laughs> what do you smell, see, hear, taste, touch in this perfect life space? Oh, I've so got this one. <laughs> I do this every day, actually. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Uh, my husband took us on our honeymoon to Maui. And uh, we've been back uh, three times since. And I was born on the island of Oahu. My dad was in the service. So um, I've always wanted to go back and I could never afford to do it. So being able to go was amazing. And since then, um, while I was there, I embedded a bunch of thoughts. I don't know if you've ever done that, where like oh, yeah. we're just on the road and there was the sky and it was like a certain kind of rain cloud thing and there was a smell in the air. And I just forced myself to record the moment so that while I was meditating back at home, I could relive it. And um, I've been able to do it a couple of times driving. Um, you know, the, there are a lot of mountains here, especially in, in like Malibu when we go to the beach and stuff. So I can pretend that I'm in Maui and I actually feel like I'm really there. And so um, we found this one beach and it's on this residential street where the houses are very large. And um, my dream is to uh, really propel my career, helping people cope. I wanna expand my blog. I want to um, monetize my YouTube channel. I want to um, have some eBooks that I wanna do and I already do coaching, but I don't like advertise it because I can only do one or two clients a month because of my limitations. But I want to do where um, where I can be in more places at once. I want to record webinars and interactive things and make them available to people who are suffering from chronic illness and pain to help them, you know, learn that outside of the bottle thinking and get over feeling bad about themselves. And um, I want to have like a retreat at that house in Maui. And uh, some of the people that I work with one-on-one -on -one throughout the year 
will have the opportunity to come and stay, you know, in my house and then um, work one-on-one -on -one with me to help, you know, get their coping levels up so that they, you know, can also feel like they can keep going beyond coping because um, you can, you know, uh, there's a young lady who had um, CFS, Claire, and that was her whole purpose was just to tell people, even though you're sick, you can still be happy. You can still carve out a little life for yourself. And it all happens up here. It all starts up here. And my lips are killing me. And I probably have six symptoms right now going on. And I'm not going to give up the experience to talk to someone and to share my story and uh, to just walk through the world. You know, this is my contribution. Absolutely. Driving my idea. So when I say the word joy, what is the image that comes into your mind? Oh, I lost you. Are you back? Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if you heard that. I'll repeat it. Oh, when I, when I say the word joy, what mm -hmm. is the image that comes into your mind? Um, yellow. Jump. Okay. Okay. So what's another like core desired feeling, something that you just want to feel every day of your life? Strong. Strong. Okay. So when I say the word strong, what's the image that comes into your mind? Mm -hmm. You? Okay. So I want to see, I want you to see you against that yellow, joyful backdrop, jumping up into the air with your hair kind of, I see that. <laughs> and then I want rainbows coming out of you <laughs> and splashing onto everyone around you. That's like my so, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's your little image that you can come up with whenever a thought is just like <sighs> hounding you, you can be like, bam, with your stop sign. But instead of a stop sign, <laughs> done, enjoy. Love it. There we go. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, it's my pleasure. Where can everyone find you? Um, on my blog is goingbeyondcoping.com. And um, I'm on Facebook, Dawn Super. If you want to friend me personally, that's totally cool. Um, I share a lot of really funny stuff because happy matters. And <laughs> a little bit of happy that you collect along the way goes to hold you up when the poop hits the fan. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.